Good day. So, yes, it's been a wee while since my last episode. Um, a few months, so uh, it's been a wee bit up and down in terms of my mood level. Um, been in depression cycles and I'm feeling a bit level now, so feeling good, uh, good enough to be able to do another podcast. So this one is about medication. So, again, just going by my experiences, um, this is just for entertainment value, Our information should be backed up by seeing medical professionals, I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist or doctor, so please seek uh, correct medical advice. So, from my journey... Um, Way back when I was misdiagnosed with depression, I've been put on a whole host of different medications. Um, the first one, uh, or the first group, have been antidepressants. Now, because I've got bipolar, there's a, a, a kind of divide within the kind of medical fraternity whether or not you should be given people with an, uh, with de- uh, bipolar antidepressants because it could lead to uh, manic episodes or hypomania. My experiences though, on the other hand, of having been misdiagnosed with depression, even though I had bipolar, is that the antidepressants never worked. So... For years, probably about 10 years, I've been taking every single type of antidepressant under the sun and not one of them worked, not one of them helped me get out of a depression cycle, even though I'm very, very religious when it comes to taking my medication. And that's that's probably the message that I want to kind of convey over this, this episode is the fact that whether or not you believe in medication or you don't believe in medication or you believe in self-medication is giving things a chance um, to take it for a few days, a few weeks <clears throat> a few days, a few weeks, whatever it's just not long enough for medication to take effect and I think with every medication that you take it asks you to take it for or you know, doctors, psychiatrists and stuff like that psychologists ask you to take them for a number of weeks and I think statistically they say I think it's somewhere around between 6 and 8 weeks and if you don't feel the effects so you don't feel the benefits from the medication during that period of time then consider um, use an alternative alternative medication to go to your doctor to go to your psychiatrist and request another form of the medication but there's so many medications out there, depending on what your ailment is. So for me, once I actually got the proper diagnosis of bipolar, or bipolar type 2, um, it was a case of going on to antipsychotics and mood stabilizers, or anticonvulsants. Convulsants? Anti convulsants convulsants it doesn't sound right anyway mood stabilizers so the majority of mood stabilizers out there were developed for um, epilepsy uh, because they discovered they don't know very much about the brain they don't know very much about bipolar but they find that um, it has a mood sta- some medication have mood stabilising effects that were developed originally for um, epilepsy so there might be some kind of correlation there some sort of link to the fact that bipolar is closely related to epilepsy so all these things we keep on getting new information from but again, you know, going through so many years now um, since being diagnosed with bipolar, 
it's been about seven or eight years now and again I've tried all different types of medications quetiapine, lamotrigine, lithium um, lithium as most psychiatrists would say is the kind of gold standard for bipolar and it's the oldest medication for it out there and it was developed I think in the 1950s um, but it's it can be quite toxic to the body so you have to get regular blood tests just to make sure it's not um, messing up your system, your liver functions and stuff like that so you know it works for some people but I had quite bad side effects from it and tremors and stuff like that so I decided after about a year, year and a half of taking it that I didn't want to be on it anymore so again, you know, it's 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 a case of a medication can work for a period of time, your body changes, your mind changes and you have to get to used to the fact that that medication might not be right for you now. You know, and I think a lot of people find it hard just being on a medication. Uh, taking them regularly, forgetting about medication and stuff like that, or just refusing point blank to take medication, think, thinking that oh, I can do this on my own, or you know, um, I, I I shouldn't be on medication, um, and I'm here to try and steer people in the direction of taking medication because. I know it works for me. It might not work for everybody, but it works for me. I know so many other people with bipolar that take medication regularly, religiously. Now, I'm not suggesting that you take medication without question, you know. I'm here to say, take medication, record your results, go back to your GP, your psychiatrist, psychologist, medical professional, and explain what's happening um, so that they can cater the medication cocktails that some people are on many medications some people are just on one medication it really just depends what's right for you you know so currently I'm on a good combination now so now I'm on sodium valproate which is uh, another older drug like lithium not as severe so they do do blood tests and stuff like that but not as regularly and that seems to be working with a combination of the lansipine so sodium valproate I'm on quite a high dose 700 milligrams in the morning 700 milligrams in the evening and the lansipine which is 10 milligrams again kind of antipsychotic so that's that really um, I would say that I'm more level than I've been in a long time quite balanced um, so much so now I think right from the beginning of being diagnosed bipolar everybody was more concerned about my hypomanic states the highs because they found that they were more destructive or dangerous. But now, um, in a, a level place, I've always maintained that what I found the most difficult is my depression cycles. So I've got the confidence now, after talking to a few medical professionals, about comorbidity. Comorbidity is just having more than one element or ailment that... Um, you can have more than one issue. Like for me, I've got ADHD along with the bipolar and anxiety issues. Um, so now I've got the confidence to go back to my next appointment to my psychiatrist and discuss the antidepressants. Because I found I find the depression cycles, even though I've come 
so far through therapies and medications and stuff like that and good support networks now I still find it extremely difficult during the depression cycles you know just take care of myself uh, being able to wash and stuff like that and eat um, and function as a human being you know it's very difficult and obviously suicidal ideation and stuff like that as well so so now I've got the confidence to go for my next appointment and talk about antidepressants but it's not too much of an issue at the moment because I'm quite level so but this is the right time to discuss these things um, another medication that I've started taking again that I, I came off because I didn't like the effects that were, I was having on me is the medication for the ADHD which is methylphenidate or Ritalin um, which is like a stimulant and again you know they were cautious about putting me on a stimulant because obviously the fear put me into a hypomanic state it just helps me get motivated, it helps me focus on one task at a time, uh, gives me the impetus to be able to do things you know, on a daily basis. And the side effects that I was having on it was when I was on a lower dose of the sodium valparate, I was getting heart palpitations and sweats and stuff like that and I just, it felt absolutely horrible and I didn't want, you know, it was like panic attacks and anxiety and stuff like that so I asked them to remove them from my prescription so they removed it months ago and it was only while I was going through a, a wee bit more of a difficult period and I was uh, I wondering, I, was, I wonder if the, the medication for my ADHD is going to help me through these tough times. So I started taking, I had some left over from my last prescription. So I started taking them again and I felt better. And I thought, well maybe this combination with the higher sodium valproate works with this combination of medication. So, like I said before, sometimes things change, your body changes... The, the groups of medication that you're taking might help just as much as it hinders. What I'm trying to say is medication has its place. And a lot of the time people self-medicate because they haven't found a medication that works for them. So, you know, drinking too much, smoking weed, harder drugs, for them to deal with day-to-day -day mm -hmm. life. And I'm here to say, well... Medications, I, I know I'm all against big pharma because it's just money for them, it's a business for them. They're not in the business of healing people or, or curing people, they're in the business of keeping people unwell. And I'm a great believer of that, and I'm a great believer of natural medicines as well and therapeutic. Um, I do believe that there are some benefits from weeds, but in Scotland at the moment, it's illegal. You don't know what you're getting. It's not medically researched enough yet. But I think, I believe, eventually we'll come up with more natural remedies that can have benefits as well. So in closing... Don't give up on medication if it doesn't work for the first few days, first few weeks. Give it time. And remember, you know, in terms of support, it might not be the right medication for you, you know. It might be working for years and years and then suddenly it stops working. Don't be disheartened. Go back to your medical professional. Explain what you're feeling, what you're going through. Be open to suggestion. Be open to trying different medications. Not every single medication fits all. Everybody's different. Everybody's human, you know. But I'd just like to leave you with that point in terms of there might be something out there that can help. So hopefully you enjoyed this. It's been informative. Gives you some benefits. If you like, please share, comment. And let's get discussing, you know. We're all here to help each other, and hopefully this might help you. And again, I'm not a medical professional. If you need help, please seek help from your GP, psychiatrist, psychologist. Thanks very much.